Today's objective is factors and prime factorization, and I'm also going to have some divisibility rules too at the end. All right, factors are the pieces of the multiplication problem. So if I were multiplying two times, four times two times three, those are my factors. My, my answer product is 24. So we've talked a lot about product, but we haven't talked a lot about factors. So you need to know the terms, the pieces of the multiplication problem are called the factors. All right, prime numbers have only two factors, the number one and the number itself. Composite numbers have more than two factors. For example, the number 12, you could say that's 1 times 12. How did I do that, huh? Fix that. 1 times 12, or 2 times 6, or 3 times 4. So that's more than two factors. So 12 is a composite number. 5, the only two whole numbers you can multiply together to get 5 are 1 times 5. Therefore, it's a prime number, because the only factors are the number 1 and the actual number we're multiplying, and we are factoring 5. Here's a list of the prime numbers under 25. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. 2 is the only even prime number because every other even number is divisible by 2. 2, the only way to get it is 1 times 2. The number 1 is neither a prime nor composite because it only has one factor, 1. 1 times 1 is 1. They aren't two different digits, okay? So don't include 1 as a prime number. Now prime factorization is listing the factors of a number using only prime numbers. So we can't say for prime factorization 12 equals 3 times 4 because 4 is a composite number. We would have to say 12 equals 2 times 2 times 3 because 2 and 3 are prime numbers. We could also say 2 to the second power times 3. Okay. Now you can use a factor tree or a ladder to do prime factorization. Or you could do it in your head. Okay, these are just tools until you become really familiar with it. So let's do the prime factorization of 630. First, I'm going to do it in a tree. I'm going to say 63 times 10. Now, there are a lot of factors. I just always, if it ends in a zero, have it be times 10. 63 is 7 times 9. 7 is prime, so I can stop there. 9 is 3 times 3, and those are prime, so I can stop there. 10 is 2 times 5, and those are prime, so I can stop there. So if I were listing the prime factorization of 630, it's 2 times 3 squared times 5 times 7. Okay, we only use the numbers that are at the end of the tree, the end of the branches. And we need to list our numbers smallest to largest. And the only problem with the tree is sometimes it's easy to forget some. Now let's show you in a ladder. 630. I make the bar and I always start with 2 if it's an even did number. I try to start with my smallest numbers and go in order. So 2 divides into 630 315 times. I know 3 goes into 315 because of the divisibility rules, which I'll tell you on the next page. But it does 105 times. 3 goes into 105 35 times. 5 goes into 35 7 times. 7 goes into itself once. So if I were listing, if I were doing the latter, I would say 630 equals 2 times 3 squared times 5 times 7. And when you're doing the latter for prime factorization, when you get to 1, you're done. You have to go all the way to 1, as opposed to greatest common factor and least common multiple, where you just go to the numbers being relatively prime. All right. I personally don't care which method you use. You can also do it in your head. These are tools. Use what works best for you. Okay? A monomial, here's another little thing, has numbers or variables or both. It can include exponents. So if you need to list the prime factorization of a monomial, you use your factor tree or ladder for your numbers, and then you just write out the variables. Okay? 
So if I'm going to do a factor tree for 28, I'll say 4 times 7, and 4 is 2 times 2. If I were doing the latter, I would say 2 goes into 28 14 times, 2 goes into 14 7 times, 7 goes into itself once. But either way, I know it's 2 times 2 times 7, 2 times 2 times 7. So I don't worry about the variables when I'm doing the ladder or the tree. I say 28x y to the cubed, or y to the third power, equals 2 times 2 times 7, and then I just list my variables, x and 3y's, okay, because it's y to the third. Remember, the x one, it tells you how many times to write down the base. The base is a the base is y in this case, okay, so you have to write three of them. That's it for factoring with the monomial, so including the variables. All right, let's do divisibility rules. Divisibility rules. There are some rules you can use to easily tell if a large number is divisible by the numbers 2 through 10, except 7. There's a rule for 7, but we're not going to do it. So here is the number, and here is the rule. You can write them all down, but why don't you let me explain them first and then write them down because then you'll understand them better, okay? So to see if a number is divisible by 2, you just check is the last digit even. Does it end in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8? Is a number divisible by 5? Well, it is if the last digit is a 5 or a 0. Is the number divisible by 10? It is if the last digit is a zero. These, I think, are the three easiest to do, okay? So I put them in order from easiest to a little less easy. All right, is a number divisible by three? Well, if the sum of the digits is divisible by three, then the whole number is divisible by three. So let's say I have the number 834. I do eight plus three plus four, okay? I add these up. Eight plus three plus four is 15. 15 is divisible by 3, so 834 is also. I wrote 15 divides by 3, so 834 does also. You could even, if you wanted to, you could say 15 is 1 plus 5 equals 6, and 3 goes into 6. Okay? Now, 9 is the same rule, except the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. So let's say I have the number 297 we add 2 plus 9 plus 7, and we get 18. And 18 is divisible by 9, or 18 divides by 9, so 297 does 2. That's a pretty fun rule. Note, any number divisible by 9 is also divisible by 3, but not the other way around, okay? For example, 15, 3 goes into 15, and 3 goes into 18, but 9 only goes into 18. All right, 6. A number is divisible by 6 if the number is divisible by 2 and 3, okay? So it has to be an even number and the sum of the, divis sum of the digits divisible by 3. It's not or. It has to be both. The number 4. The last two digits in the number is divisible by 4. So we're not adding them together anymore. We're just looking at the number. 916, I look at 16. And 16 is divisible by 4, so the 916 number is also. This is the most annoying one, I think, 8, because it's the last three digits, are the last three digits divisible by 8. Sometimes you have to actually do some work. So if I have the number 15,824, I look at 824. 824 is divisible by 8, 103 times, right, because it goes into 800 and it goes into 24. So 15,824 is also divisible by 8. So let's check this number, 127,530, and see if it's divisible by these numbers. Notice I do the numbers in order of easy to harder. I don't do them in order. So if, when I give you a worksheet, you can skip around. So is this number divisible by 2? Yes, because it's an even number. Is this div number divisible by 5? Yes, because it ends in a 0 or a 5. Is this number divisible by 10? Yes, because it ends in a 0. Is it divisible by 3? Well, we have to add up the digits. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 and 7 is 10. 5 plus 3 is 8. 
10 plus 8 is 18. I'm just going to write that down. Does 3 go into 18? Yep, and so does 9. I picked a good number, huh? Is this number divisible by 6? Well, it is divisible by 2, and it's divisible by 3. Since it's divisible by both, it's divisible by 6. Is it divisible by 4? I need to look at the number 30. Does 4 go into 30 evenly? No. And if 4 doesn't go into the number, then 8 won't either. The same as the 3 and the 9. If 3 doesn't go in, 9 won't either. If 4 doesn't go in, 8 doesn't go in. So I'm finished checking all the divisibility rules for 127,530. And that's it.